Yo, what's happening, y'all? It's your man Valentine, baby. Coming from on the grind. You know what time it is, man. You know how we go down. It is now the outside edition, y'all. It's still sunny in Van City. You know, sun's going down, though, but we still doing it outside for y'all. And this is how we're going to do it. Now... It's been, well, since Friday now, huh, that everything has been going down. Jacob Blake's still in the hospital, still paralyzed. He's now unshackled because they, they took the handcuffs off him because I guess they must have thought he was going to run away when he's paralyzed from the waist down. You feel me? Now, I just have to bring to light the... Um, Actually, first of all, let me um, let me say that we uh, we had the passing of a um, of our brother, the King T'Challa. Wakanda forever, you know what I mean? And my man Chadwick Boseman passed away this weekend, and it, it, it's tough because I guess his last tweet was make sure that. Everybody goes out and votes. You know what I mean? With uh, Kamala Harris. Sad. But his legacy will remain and we will remember him as King T'Challa of the Black Panther, man. You know what I mean? I have to give it to y'all. T'Challa. Wakanda forever, man. I gotta do it. I had to. And then we had another icon passed away, my man John Thompson. Georgetown, uh, Georgetown's prolific head coach for the longest time. I remember seeing him when I went to Georgetown when Allen Iverson and um, Patrick Ewing and Alonzo Mourning, I think, were there. I think it might have been Dikembe Mutombo might have been there instead. But, you know, also in memory of that John Thompson man because that dude didn't, he coached boys into men. You know what I mean? Because he coached them not just for, he prepared them for basketball, the afterlife basketball, not just basketball present. You know what I mean? And that was the, um, that was the biggest thing probably about John Thompson was he didn't just coach, he coached boys into men. So rest in peace, Mr. Thompson, and rest in peace, Chadwick Boseman. Now, as I was saying before, I wanted to bring to light the fact that um, I think in Montreal, the statue of John A. McDonald was pulled down. And this statue was pulled down in front of a bunch of residential schools when this man was, was basically instrumental in the residential schools, you know, where taking people, kids away from their families and putting them into these schools. And the statue was torn down, and I guess the, um, I don't know if it's a Quebec minister or whoever it was, that says he wants it back up. That statue should not go back up. And I don't know if, I, I, I'm not sure about this, where what I was hearing it, but the new conservative leader, Aaron O'Toole, I don't know he, if he was saying that there was no systemic racism in, in, the, uh, in the RCMP or... In, in the police force in Canada. I don't know if he uh, remembered what that RCMP um, head, Brenda Lucky, what she was saying, and she had to go back and think about it and then come back with, yeah, there is systemic racism in, in the RCMP or in the, the police forces or in Canada. I don't know if that's what he was saying, but y'all need to fact check that and see if that's what he was saying because he's trying to come up with some other type of meaning for systemic racism. And I didn't understand it. So, um, and then, you know, Toronto PD, they passed the law that they're gonna wear body cams. So that's even better. And hopefully that helps. And then we went through the, um, the Jacob Blake shooting. And, you know, Trump is, 
is not even saying anything bad about this young man who shot two people and injured one. You know, this kid shot two people and went home and the police then arrested him. And here's the difference. This is what I'm this is what I'm trying to bring up. That there are two different types of justice system. There's one for white people and one for black people. Because if this was a brother walking down the street with a gun, with his hands up, who knows what would have happened to him. But this dude couldn't even get the police to stop for him. They just let him go. I don't get it. And then the police, is, they go out with all the people who are marching peacefully and brutalizing these people. Pepper spraying them, water cannons, tear gas, all that's happening. And yet in Portland, a bunch of Trump supporters come through with pepper spray and paintballs, and yet they are not arresting any of them. So, listen, black folks, you cannot be scared right now because you know what? This has happened before. Because back in the 60s and, and 70s, when the marches were happening, this was the same thing that was going down. You had the, the racist individuals who would come out to try to break your spirits for marching. But you, you have to march. And the police didn't do a thing to them, but they arrested marchers. But yet the people who were causing anarchy didn't arrest them. Like the Trump supporters who went through Portland. Fire and pepper spray, punching people out, fighting with people. You know, and then a dude gets shot. But yet, they don't arrest any of them. Because Trump says, hey, listen, we want law and order. And yet, people who are marching peacefully, they get arrested and get tear gassed. You know what I mean? You, you've got to keep marching, people. Because this is the only way it's going to change. Because... We have to continuously say black lives matter, and it does matter. Because for a man to get shot seven times, or eight times in the back, and he's laying in a hospital bed, and they have to put the handcuffs on him. Then you get a, a young dude, 17 years old, who walks down the street shooting people, and you get the president taken up for him, saying, well, you know, he was, he was trying to get away, and then the bad people... Or oh, the marchers jumped on him is what he said. Unbelievable. White justice and black justice, man. It, I don't, I don't know how it's gonna, it, how it's gonna end, but it has to end. It has to end with, with justice for the people, and the racial justice for black people and equality for all black people. This is how it has to end. And in November, people, you have to vote. Do not let this dude scare you from voting. You feel what I'm saying? November 3rd, you have to go out and, and vote like your life depended on it. And it really does. Because if you want four more years of this fool in office, you won't go out and vote. But like I said, John Lewis and them, Martin Luther King, Medgar Evers, Thurgood Marshall, even the death of Emmett Till, do not let that pass by. You know what I mean? Don't let it go unnoticed because these people all fought for the right for people to vote. So make sure you get out and vote. And hopefully white justice and black justice can come together and have only one justice and justice for all. So, yeah, I know, man. We'll see what happens tomorrow. But remember, y'all, we still going through the pandemic. And I'm going to keep on seeing it. The virus does not have, it doesn't choose who it's going to, who it's going to, who it's going to hit. It has no preference. You know what I mean? 
the only the only thing that chooses and and is the pandemic of racism because Kamala Harris said it racism has no vaccine so do the right thing and make sure you wear your mask social distance wash your hands protect your family protect you you feel me yo I'm your man Valentine baby and if you think it's your time to shine, you need to get on the grind with your man Valentine.